Hi class, so I wanted to do um, a series of mini lessons for you guys um, to accompany the uh, gallery walk that we did regarding gene interactions. Um, so the first type of gene interaction I wanted to touch base with you on is pleiotropy. Um, and this is basically when one gene affects more than one trait. And there's uh, some classic examples. Uh, one of them was the frizzled chicken uh, slide that you may have seen on the gene interaction slideshow. <clears throat> Basically, uh, with this particular example with chickens, you can see that their feathers uh, look like they are like curled upward, and so they're not your typical flat feather. Uh, so it's a dominant allele actually that causes this to happen. Um, but in addition to just that phenotype of having curled up feathers, it also um, ends up producing other scenarios such as abnormal body temperatures. So all frizzled chickens have abnormal body temperatures. They also have um, a higher metabolic and blood flow rate and also greater digestive capacity. Um, they've also found, in addition to those phenotypes with this one allele, that they also lay fewer eggs than their typical counterparts. So again, this is an example of one allele that is causing change in more than one phenotype. Um, another one that's more of a human example um, is PKU. You may have heard of this before. It's a disorder. It's called phenylketonuria. I, mean, I don't know if I said that right. Um, and basically what happens is people that have PKU um, lack the enzyme to properly break down phenylalanine. Uh, you may recall phenylalanine um, when we were learning about um, protein synthesis. Um, it's a type of amino acid. If you remember, many amino acids make up a protein. This goes back, you know, to um, cells, our cell unit. Um, but we actually, um, people with PKU, obviously then they can't break that down. And what happens is they end up having phenylalanine built up in their body. And then as a result of that, um, because of that mutation of not having that enzyme required to break it down, um, it leads to a variety of other symptoms, okay? So the first phenotype is the fact that they don't have the enzyme to break down phenylalanine. Um, and so then what happens is uh, phenylalanine builds up in their body, which leads to the following phenotypes. They have uh, intellectual disabilities because it's almost like they're um, poisoning, they're being poisoned because of the buildup of phenylalanine. They also end up having more seizures. They've been associated with having a pretty poor bone strength, um, also skin rashes, behavioral disorders, mental disorders, and uh, unusually small craniums or heads. So um, you may have seen this, this um, label on Diet Coke. Um, it actually has a label that Hi. says... <laughs> that says contains phenylalanine. So um, the purpose of that is a warning so that people that do have PKU do not take that in. Uh, what I would like to do now is show you a quick tutorial. Um, and wipes? Yeah. Right over my, here, um, right over here. Um, so I'm gonna show you this quick two minute video uh, I thought was pretty helpful in explaining um, this uh, type of of gene interaction, pleiotropy. In today's video, we're going to explore the concept of pleiotropy. The term pleiotropy was first introduced by the German zoologist Ludwig Plath in a script celebrating his life's work published in 1910. Ludwig described the gene as being pleiotropic if it had several characteristics dependent upon it. The term comes from the Greek words pleion, meaning more, and tropos, meaning ways. One example of pleiotropy is phenylketonuria, a condition where one gene causes a variety of diseases, including pale skin and cognitive disease. What you're about to see is the molecular structure of the gene products responsible for these effects. Normally, in those with the wild type allele, an enzyme produced by the PAH gene catalyzes the conversion of the amino acid phenylalanine to tyrosine. Conversely, individuals with the mutated version of the PAH gene have low levels of the PAH enzyme. This results in buildup of 
phenylalanine. This buildup of phenylalanine has a multitude of effects. Cognitive disability results due to an inability to synthesize vital neurotransmitters and proteins, which event. So, um, because of that buildup of phenylalanine, uh, their brain becomes saturated in that amino acid, <clears throat> and then that also decreases levels of other amino acids that are necessary in brain cells. It can also lead to brain damage. Um, if you recall what he had just mentioned, it also um, leads to a lack of tyrosine in skin cells, which he's going to explain a little bit more of that. So. I want you to get the fact that it's like a multiple effects from one mutation or one gene. Eventually leads to irreversible brain damage. As PAH catalyzes the formation of tyrosine, and melanin production is dependent on the presence of tyrosine, changes in pigmentation are also mediated through this mechanism. As you can see, this one genetic mutation results in more than just one effect. Accordingly, this is an example of pleiotropy. And luckily, simple and routine early diagnosis and avoidance of dietary sources of phenylalanine can allow individuals with faulty copies of the PAH gene to live a perfectly normal life. Okay, so that is the end of our mini lesson on pleiotropy.